With such a broad range of handheld radios available today, it can be difficult to differentiate them and find the most comfortable and capable radio for your SOTA activations. Let's dive right in. ICOM ID50 and ID52. Looking for a top-of-the-line handheld radio? Look no further than the ICOM ID50 and ID52, ICOM's current flagships. These feature-packed radios offer D-Star for digital voice communication, DPRS for sending position reports, a built-in spectrum scope with waterfall display, and even a QSO recorder to capture your QSOs. Here's a breakdown of the key differences. The ID50 features a classic monochromatic dot matrix display, giving it a slight edge on battery life. On the other hand, the ID52 offers a full color TFT display. Generally, I always prefer LC displays, especially for outdoor use, as there is no need for a backlight. However, the TFT display ICOM installed is transflective, meaning it can also function without the need for a backlight and can be illuminated by external light sources. It works the same way as many Garmin GPS units. Convenience-wise, the ID52 has built-in Bluetooth. This lets you connect a wireless headset or even pair it with your phone for features like D-Star picture sharing. The ID50 can also share pictures via D-Star, but you'll need to use a wired USB connection to your phone. The ID52 is built slightly bulkier and the TFT display consumes a bit more power. Also, the ID50 features a modern USB-C jack for charging and PC connection, while the ID52 still uses micro-USB. Though there has recently been announced the ICOM ID52 Plus that uses USB-C as well. Both radios are built for outdoor use with an IPX7 waterproof rating. While not the lightest radios available, the ID50 and ID52 offer several features beneficial for SOTA activations. A valuable tool for SOTA is the built-in spectrum scope. This allows you to monitor activity across multiple frequencies at once, making it easier to identify and quickly tune in to short-lived summit-to-summit contacts. No more flipping through channels and potentially missing brief transmissions. The GPS-synchronized clock ensures your locked activation times are always accurate. The QSO recorder is a handy feature that automatically records incoming transmissions along with your own replies. Recordings are stored on a microSD card, sold separately, and can be reviewed on the radio or transferred to a computer. ICOM even integrated a voice keyer, letting you transmit pre-recorded CQ calls. There is a wonderful accessory available that's just made for activities like hiking or cycling. The HM243LS remote speaker microphone makes it possible to easily control your radio without needing to take it out of the backpack or carrying holster. You can freely program the four buttons on a microphone to pretty much any function available on the radio. Personally, I've set up scan start, scan skip and volume up and down. That way you can talk on frequency, change volume and resume scanning anytime you want. Scan skip will let you temporarily skip channels while scanning for an adjustable duration with just the press of a button. This comes in very handy when receiving lots of QRM while hiking, for example distant noisy QSOs or repeaters running digital modes. Up until now this was really annoying as you either had to completely stop scanning, turn the volume down or stop to operate the radio. This combination of radio and microphone is my current favorite setup, making SOTA activations much more enjoyable, despite lacking classic APRS functionality, which is a real shame. The pros are a transflective display, spectrum scope, a remote control microphone, it's USB chargeable, has got an IPX7 rating and a built-in QSO recorder, voice keyer and GPS synchronized clock. The cons are no FM APRS unfortunately and it's quite heavy weighing in at 300 grams or 10.6 ounces or in case of the ID52 330 grams and 11.6 ounces. The Yaesu FT4 and FT65. The two budget dual banders by Yaesu are definitely worth mentioning as well. Checking out at 250 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces and 260 grams or 9.1 ounces respectively, they are one of the lighter options available. There is not much difference between the radios. The dot matrix display of the FT65 is much easier to read and operate than the segmented LC display of the FT4 though. 
The FD4's buttons are also much smaller. Keep that in mind when deciding between those models. Also, the FD65 allows you to display both AB bands at the same time. The menu structure has been implemented very well and is far superior to many of the cheap Chinese radios on the market. The pros are a transflective display, it's very light and has got an IP54 rating. The cons are no USB charging. The Anytone ATD878 UV2 Plus. The Anytone is a very popular DMR radio and it also brings an enormous feature set to the table that makes it a very good choice for SOTA. The massive battery seemingly never runs out and enables up to 8 watts of output power in turbo mode. You can beacon APRS via DMR or FM, whatever works best in your area. It's also possible to send APRS messages, which you can use to spot yourself or someone else via the APRS network. Being a DMR radio, you're opening up a new channel of communication for yourself, including messaging via the DMR network, again useful for spotting. A GPS synchronized clock is again nice for logging. I've also been complimented many times for the excellent voluminous modulation of the radio. Not too long ago, Aniton also released their new USB-C chargeable battery, which now makes the radio an even more flexible choice. Many people claim the DMR Anitones are deaf on analog FM, though that is not true anymore, if it ever was. Modern units all perform comparably to current models by Yesu, Icom, etc. The pros are FM APRS with SMS functionality, DMR with GPS and SMS functionality, a GPS synchronized clock, 8 watts of output power on VHF, USB charging using an optionally available battery, an IP54 rating and Bluetooth capabilities. The cons are a backlit TFT display, many APRS settings can only be changed via programming as well and not directly on the unit, and it's quite heavy at 330 grams or 11.6 ounces. The Yaesu VX3 the Yaesu VX3, while not being made anymore, is still worth a mention. Clocking in at only 130 grams or 4.6 ounces, it's one of the lightest dual band amateur radios ever built. The VX1 and VX2 are similarly built, but the VX3 has implemented an innovative physical knob lock that locks the multi knob in place. This system not only prevents changing channel or volume by accident, the knob is also much more robust due to the locking mechanism and can't be damaged easily while being pocketed. Spare batteries are still widely available, making this radio a good purchase even today, should you get a hold of one. Operation using the internal battery will only output 1.5 watts of RF power on 2 meters, but that's enough for most activations. The pros are a transflective LC display, it's very light and it's got a knob lock. The cons are the low TX power and no USB charge. The Pico APRS V4. The Pico APRS is a very special device. Previously only developed as an ultra compact APRS tracker, the latest version V4 now features a PTT button and microphone, allowing for VHF monoband voice communication at up to 1 watt of output power. At a weight of only 60 grams or 2.1 ounces, excluding antenna, this is the ultimate ultralight minimalist's choice. The transceiver can also be charged via USB-C, channel programming is possible via a web interface running on the Pico, packed with features like follow me, eye gate capabilities, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, APRS, SMS and loads of informative screens shown on the full color display. It's a very capable tool at your hands. The pros are it's ultralight, got USB-C, FM APRS with SMS functionality and a GPS synchronized clock. The cons are of course the low TX power. Other worthy mentions. The ICOM ICT-10. Another radio of ICOM's lineup, the ICT-10, is often overlooked. What you get for your money is a simple and really high quality dual band handheld. Not a lot of features, but what it can do, it does perfectly. The housing is very robust and sturdy and the knobs feel high quality. Modulation reports are also excellent as usual with ICOM radios. The IP67 rating supports demanding portable activities. Though be aware of the very small screen. 
The weight is 278 grams or 9.8 ounces. The Yaesu FT5D. The current flagship handheld by Yaesu includes the digital C4FM mode, APRS via FM and a band scope. The IP rating has been improved over the previous model and is now IPX7. Unfortunately, the screen is not transflective and as such needs an active backlight to be read, weighing in at 282 grams or 10 ounces. The Kenwood THD75. Of course, the new Kenwood handheld must not be left out of the list. Feature packed with D-Star, FM APRS and DPRS, Bluetooth, DigiPeter capabilities and USB-C. The rating is specified as IP5455 and the screen is transflective TFT, making it suitable for outdoor use. It's very heavy though, at 345 grams or 12.2 ounces. So, to summarize, if you want a feature-packed, high-quality radio that can easily be controlled while moving, choose the ICOM ID50 or ID52 together with the HM243LS remote microphone. The Anytone ATD878 UV2 Plus is a great all-rounder with lots of power and a long battery runtime. If you're on a budget or just want a relatively light and simple radio, Yaesu got you covered with the FT4 and FT65. If your goal is to be ultralight, then the Pico APRS V4 and Yesu VX3 are interesting options for you. Be also sure to think of these points when selecting a radio. GPS functionality can be helpful in emergency situations, especially paired with automatic position beaconing. Having digital modes like DMR or D-Star available could make it more likely to reach out in an emergency. If you like doing multi-day hikes, a radio with USB charging capabilities might be an interesting choice. Let me know in the comments what your preferred setup for SOTA is, I'd love to hear about it.